So for this video, we're going to go over rotational axes. Again, I'm going to use my cube that I used to demonstrate mirror planes. You can see actually a little bit of remnants of the chalk left on the face. If it bothers you, you can wash it off just using soap and water. If it's sticking in the little grooves, you have HCL, it's very dilute HCL in your kit, so you can just put it on a napkin and give it a wipe. It should remove it because chalk is just calcium carbonate and CO2, oh, sorry, HCl will dissolve calcium carbonate as we'll see in our physical properties uh, uh, section of this course. Okay, so for rotational axes, a rotational axis is just simply an axis that bisects our crystal or runs through the center crystal. And if we rotate the crystal about that axis, we will see similar faces or we may, if, as long as the crystal has high enough symmetry. So for an example, if I were to hold the crystal that I have here in the middle of two faces, then I have an axis that's running between my two fingers. My index finger and my thumb, there is a line between my index finger and my thumb that runs through the center of my crystal. And if I were to rotate that crystal, I want to start counting how many times I see the same face through a 360 degree rotation. So it is a little bit tricky to test for this property because you have to make sure your the face that you start with is the same face that you end with. For this uh, direction, I'm gonna make it easy on myself by using the labeled face with the two as my starting face. So I know that I've done 360 degree rotation as long as that face with the two reappears. So let's figure out what kind of rotational axis this is. The possibilities could be a one fold. That means that I only see the face once through a 360 ro degree rotation. A two fold rotational face, or sorry, a two fold rotational axis is if I see the same face twice, that's every 180 degrees during a 360 degree rotation. A threefold is if I see the same face three times, so I should be seeing it every 120 degrees. And that's important. It has to be every 120 degrees. If it's not, then it's not a threefold rotational axis. The uh, next one is the fourfold, so that's every 90 degrees I see the same face, so that's four times you'll see the face during one rotation. And the last possible one would be a sixfold rotational. And so you're going to see the same face every 60 degrees. You're going to see it six times during 360 degree rotation. There is a unique rotational axis called a fourfold rotational axis, or a fourfold roto inversion, and I'll show you what that looks like in another video. Okay? So, holding the crystal, we want to be looking at the axis, not down the axis. So, looking at the axis, how many times do we see the same face? So, let's start rotating. So there's one, two, three, four. Okay, so I saw the same face four times. Obviously it's every 90 degrees because we can see that it is a square perpendicular to our axis. So this is a fourfold rotation. Now, I don't just end there. I want to find every single axis and uh, ascribe it a rotational axis. So what I'm going to do is use my chalk and I'm going to mark a little x to where that um, axis is that I've already determined. So this was a fourfold axis. And then I'm going to make a note on my pad so I don't lose track. Okay? So you want to make sure that you're very systematic uh, when you're trying to figure out where your rotational axes are. I always like to start with the faces, and then I go to the edges, and then I move to the corners. And that's just my way of doing it because it's systematic. It makes sure I'm able to identify all possible axes and I don't miss anything. You don't want to start jumping between faces and then um, edges and then corners because then you can get mixed up and you might miss something. Oh, it's a lot easier to say that when we're looking at high symmetry forms like the cube versus low symmetry forms like those in the monoclinic or triclinic systems. It's a little bit more difficult to identify the rotational axes. Okay, so I found a fourfold rotational axis here. 
because again, this is a cube, it's very symmetrical. I can just pop over to the next set of faces that I see, like these set here. And I'm going to expect to find the same thing, right? Because it is a cube. So let's start with this face here. There's an X on it, so I know it's the beginning face. So that's one, two, three, four. So again, that's a fourfold rotational axis. I'm going to mark it. So I know I already found that one. And then obviously I'm going to have a third fourfold rotational axis right here. They are very similar. They're similar rotational axes because they're occurring in the same type of faces. Okay? So I have three fourfold rotational axes. All right. And then I'm going to check out the edges. Okay, so I start at the faces, now I'm going to hold edges. Again, this is an axis, it's a line that can be run through the center of the crystal from fingertip to fingertip, and I can rotate the crystal about it. Again, I'm looking perpendicular to my axis, not down the axis. Okay, so let's start here. So I have um, this starting face, I'm going to start to rotate. So I rotate, I don't see the same face, I do see two faces, but instead I'm seeing an edge. I keep rotating and there's one, okay? Keep rotating. Now we're back to the start and there's two. So this is a two-fold rotational axis. I have the same face occurring every 180 degrees. So this face is occurring on the back side. So if I spin it, I see the same face every 180 degrees. So this is a two-fold rotational axis. When I'm in the middle of a edge, I simply just make a line like that that goes across the edge, so I know that that's one that I've already seen. And then this is a twofold, so I'll put a little tick there. Okay, so I have the same type of rotational axis occurring here. If I hold it, so that's one, two, so that's another one. Also here, one, two. Again, I'm just grabbing for the edges. Here's another one, one, two. Sorry, I didn't mark the last one, but I had one, two, three, four, okay. Here's another one. One, two. So we're up to five. And here's the last one. One, two. So now I look at all my edges and I'm confirming I've looked at them all, okay? I need to mark that last one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six two-fold rotational axes. I already identified three, four-fold. And now the ladder I need to look at, they're the corners, okay? So let's start with this face here. One, two, three. Okay, so that's a three-fold rotational axis. So if we look down on the top of that axis, we see one, two, three faces, and they're juxtapositioned 120 degrees from each other. So this is a three-fold rotational axis. Okay, let's mark that down. Uh, for this one, guys, I just kind of do a line up to the corner from each face. Okay, just like that. All right, let's keep looking because I know that this is a cube. It's highly symmetrical. I'm going to have more of these guys. Okay, so let's start here. One, two, three. Okay, that's another one. Again, I'm making the chalk marks where my fingers were when I was rotating. Okay, this guy here needs to be counted for. Is there an easy face I can use? Let's Put it upside down and I'll put my two, three, right? No surprises. Okay, and the 
because there are eight vertices or eight uh, corners to a cube, it's obvious I'm going to have threefold rotational axes, right? Let's hold them here. This is my last one. So that's one, two, three. Okay, so all of my faces, all of my edges, all of my corners have been spoken for. That was my last one. So I have four of those. And so now to write this in proper nation, guys, you're going to write from the highest uh, axis first. So that's our fourfold axis. There was no six, there was no bar four. So we make an A for axis. We put a subscript four. This means a fourfold rotational axis. And we have three of them. All right, next up, going down the order, we have a three-fold rotational axis. There are four of them. We have three four-fold, four three-fold, four, three and six two-fold rotational axes. And this is written in the proper notation. What's great about the rotational axes is that it allows us to figure out our crystal system away. So I actually always start, when I start looking at the symmetry of it, it of a crystal, I start with the rotational axes because if you identify the rotational axes right away you can tell what crystal system you are in. We'll see this um, in better example next lab, but the isometric crystal system is characterized by these four threefold rotational axes. In no other crystal system, it doesn't matter if it's tetragonal or orthorhomb and no or trigonal and no other uh, crystal system would you have four threefold rotational axis. So right away you can tell that this is an isometric crystal. Okay, so that's it. That's rotational axes.